post-election, most a lot of people of color have lived are living in a higher level of anxiety as it is. And what we certainly don't need, if we want to come together as a community, is affirmative legislation that simply drives a bigger wedge into the community. This piece of legislation will specifically impact uh, vulnerable communities, the immigrant community, uh, the refugee community that's already here. Racial profiling is what will be the inevitable result of this bill, and we don't need to guess about that. There's no bill that's been passed with this in this sort of genre that has not led to racial profiling. So simply to say on the bill, oh, by the way, don't racially profile, we live in a world of reality, not in a world of hypothetical, and we know by experience of other states what happens. When you decide as a community that your law enforcement is going to enforce and take on the job of enforcing immigration laws, you create communities that have no interest in reporting crimes, have no interest in cooperating with law enforcement to investigate crimes, and you end up with communities at risk. It puts both individual non-citizen communities at risk, but it also puts a larger community at risk um, who is going to have to endure the fact that their local law enforcement's resources are diverted to undertake a immigration law evaluation. People who are citizens should be concerned because at least at the last draft of the bill that we saw, it required everybody to prove citizenship. And I don't know about the people that are watching this, but many individuals don't walk around with proof of their citizenship. It is written in a way that suggests that law enforcement can simply tap into a database that's going to tell them if somebody is lawfully here or not. I'm, I've been qualified as an immigration law expert in federal court. I testify nationally. I give lectures nationally to immigration lawyers. And I can tell you that there is no such database. There is no database which any law enforcement officer can access that's going to tell them whether somebody is here lawfully or not. And what this will do is simply clog up the system with people who have no other, have no, have committed no violent crime at all. For me, as a, an indigenous citizen of this state, uh, I've been here since time immemorial, as my family says. My grandfathers have been here for many generations, thousands of years, and not one has ever said, let's ban all immigrants. Instead, they've always been very hospitable in taking in guests, immigrants, Europeans, whoever it may be, and welcoming them with uh, utmost hospitality. Now, when I see other immigrants influencing this discrimination on other immigrants, I have a problem with that, and I see that this bill certainly just promotes that division, and I think that with my ancestry that has infused the values of the simple hospitality, that country way of life, being a good neighbor, being a good relative, I think that infusion is ultimately the true value of Idaho, but yet you see someone like Representative Cheney trying to dismantle that, and uh, that to me is just uh, a, a simple disregard, but uh, ultimately just an attack on my local community. I, I, generally don't understand why anyone would not have a problem with this bill. While it is also a waste of taxpayer money, it's also a direct attack on businesses. And as a businesswoman, uh, as a member of the ag industry, I know that this deeply impacts all of us. I think that we have to be very specific as to what the intent of this bill really does. One of the things that we should continue to be focused on is how do we build uh, communities that, that foster respect a mutual respect towards every person. Uh, this piece of legislation really takes us in an opposite direction where we continue to fight uh, particularly individuals that are seen to be foreign. So it doesn't accomplish the purposes, it exposes the county to liability, and it's going to make people less safe.